Hello everybody, it's Marie Deemer here. Welcome back to my kitchen. I have had a lot of requests um, over the years for my scones recipe. My friends and family know that it's a go-to for me anytime that I have guests, people over for a cup of tea. Um, it's super, super easy. I know some people feel a little intimidated about making scones, but let me show you just exactly how easy it is. So the first thing that you would want to do is to preheat your oven to 450 degrees. We're going to cook these scones for between 12 and 15 minutes, depending on your oven, at 450 degrees so that the tops are all nice and toasty and that the dough has risen significantly. So the second thing we're going to do, what the scones call for, if you've got a pen handy, it calls for two cups of all-purpose flour, a, a teaspoon of salt, a couple of tablespoons of sugar, and um, an egg, and a half a cup of buttermilk. Now buttermilk is something that I don't normally have on hand, ever. Um, so I take a half a cup of milk and I spoil it with a good snort of lemon juice. And that gives you the equivalent texture of buttermilk. So I'm going to do that to give the milk enough time to set. I've just got lemon juice here. You could use um, vinegar if you wished. I'm just gonna put a good snort in there. It'll do the same thing. It starts to curdle the milk, looks kind of nasty, works great. So you're just gonna fill that up to the half cup mark. And we're gonna let that sit for a couple of minutes until it's time for us to use it. That'll give it a chance to thicken up. I also have a little bit of milk in a dish here because before I put the scones in the oven, I'm going to brush them with milk. You could also use an egg wash if you like. Milk is just as easy. Um, and that toasts up the top of the scones nice and brown. <clears throat> So the oven is preheated, <coughs> excuse me, the oven is preheated to 450 degrees and we are ready to start to make the scone dough. <coughs> scone dough, super easy to throw together. You do not want to work the dough much. So it's not something, it's not a kind of bread that you would put in a, in a stand mixer. It's all done by hand. And you want everything to be light and fluffy. So the first ingredient is two cups of flour. We're going to, when you scoop flour out, if you scoop it out like this and press it in, um, it's very compact and that will not yield a nice fluffy dough. So I'm going to spoon it in to my one cup measure without packing it in. I'm gonna do it over top of the flour canister because I just wanna make sure that I get a light, non-packed um, two cups of flour. I scrape it off the top and you have a level cup. I'm putting it in a, a sieve here because when I have the dry ingredients together, I'm going to sift them into the bowl, again, creating lightness. So the second cup of flour. And I will put that into this a little sip. So that's our flour. To the two cups of flour, you will put in a couple of tablespoons of sugar. I'm using my four and one spoon. It has a spot on the end for a tablespoon, a teaspoon. If you flip it over, there's a half a teaspoon and a line for a quarter of a teaspoon. So a couple of tablespoons of sugar. Again, in the sieve, we're going to Sift this all together. And I did have an originating recipe that I have morphed over the years, um, so I don't have anything written down, and I kind of eyeball quite a bit. You also need to put in a tablespoon of baking powder. This is your rising agent, okay? Tablespoon of baking powder. And a teaspoon of salt. Very carefully measured, as you see. Could use the, the spoon, but you know, salt. Those are your dry ingredients for your dough. You're just going to lightly sift that. Maybe you have a hand sifter. Um, I like this one. Now make sure that there's no lumps. Okay, it's light, it's fluffy. 
I'm going to make a little bit of a well in the middle of this. Well, that might have been premature. So what you want to do is this is the time with your dry ingredients when you would season it if you like. You can make plain scones, in which case I would just brush milk on the top, sprinkle a little sugar before, um, before I bake them, in which case you're not putting any flavor in. Today I'm going to do our favorite, which is cheese scones. I just use a bag of shredded cheese. I quite like Tex-Mex in there, but whatever you want, any kind of shredded cheese. Um, you could also make sweet scones if you had an Epicure pantry like I do. You could use Cocoa Crunch, which is a chocolate coconut flavoring, maybe some summer berry and some white chocolate chips, also fantastic. Um, if you were looking for a savory scone, you might put in a tablespoon of three onion, CCB, which is cheese, chives, and bacon, maybe some everything bagel on the top, um, a little bit of garlic powder, whatever you want. These scones are great with jam. They're also great with soups and chilies. So once you get making them, you'll realize how easy it is. So at this point, I have the dry ingredients. I'm going to put in some cheese. This is not part of the recipe. This is part of the demering. So for me, that's a real good handful of cheese. How much is that? Not sure. Okay. So you're going to stir that up a little bit, lightly, gently. And it calls for a half a cup of cold butter. I will get that out of the fridge. <clears throat> butter needs to be cold. Um, if the recipe talked about breaking it in with a pastry cutter, making sure it's broken up the size of the peas, that's a little bit of a pain. So anytime you're doing that, any kind of recipe with your cold butter, it's twice as easy to just grate it. I just have my large grater here. Um, half a cup of butter is one stick or a quarter of a pound. So I'm just gonna grate the quickly because my hands are gonna melt the butter, the warmth from my hands. A half a cup of butter, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> this is so much easier than trying to break it up with a pastry cutter and everything gets jammed in the blades, way easier. There you go. Half a cup of butter. I keep shoving stuff outside of the range of the camera. Okay, this is what I've got. <clears throat> Lightly run the flour to break up, to coat the cheese. You don't want a big clump of cheese in the middle. Your dough's not going to roll out. And you do not want to overwork this dough. Okay, so all that is, was your dry ingredients, your flour, baking powder, salt, sugar, I opted to put some cheese in. You could put a tablespoon of flavoring of anything you want. That's your dry ingredients. I'm making a well in the bottom of the bowl, and I'm going to add the wet ingredients. For wet ingredients, you have one egg and your half a cup of buttermilk or spoiled milk. <clears throat> I'm mix that up like that. I like to put um, the milk into the egg to mix it again so that I don't get streaky egg in my dough. That's personal preference. You can do what you want. So now you're going to put this clumpy, gross looking milk in with your egg. And you're going to put it in the middle of the well you made in your dry ingredients. <clears throat> I'm going to mix it a bit with a fork. You do not want to overwork this dough, like I said, or your scones will come out tough. <clears throat> now you don't have to roll this out. That's another thing I like. Some people like to roll out the scones and cut um, circles. It's not my bag. I'm going to dump this just on a pastry sheet. You could do it right on your counter if you wish that to your dough, you can see that there is still dry flour there that needs to be incorporated. I'm just going to do that by hand. I'm going to press it together. Your hands will soften the flour out, or the butter a little bit and your dough will start to stick together. Not the neatest process in the world, but this is a family favorite. I can say that in all certainty.
what you want to end up with is a disc of dough that has stuck together, that isn't dry and crumbly, okay? So as I push down, more and more of the flour bits are sticking together. If you find it's really dry, no matter what you do, rather than working with it too much, put about a tablespoon of milk into it and work it in and you'll be done. Sometimes depending on your flour, your eyeballing of the milk, um, it might come out a little bit dry. And I've always hated when people give you a new recipe and say, you'll know, and you're like, how would I do? How would I know that? If it's a little dry and crumbly, see how this is sticking together as a disc? You want a disc that's between six and eight inches around. I'm just using my hands to form it. Basically, the key to the disc, regardless of how big your circle is, the key to the disc, see, I can tuck the dough in there and it'll stick. Nice consistency. The key to the disc is to have about an inch or an inch and a half high. That'll give you the height of the scones. Just like that. I'm gonna brush a little bit of milk on top. Some people prefer an egg wash. To me, I feel like I'm wasting a whole lot of egg when I do that. I'm just gonna brush a little bit of milk on the top and I'm going to spread the, uh, this will make your scones brown and I'm going to spread it the top, sprinkle it with a little bit of sugar. It might seem strange that I'm making a cheese scone for sweet purposes, but they are absolutely, I'm gonna go around the outside, they're absolutely fantastic with, um, with jam, they really are. So this is just a little bit wet on the surface, gives this, the sugar something to stick to. Put some sugar here just so I'm not dipping my hands in my sugar bowl. I'm just gonna do this. If you were making savory, this is where you might put SPG on top, salt, pepper, garlic, Epicure's salt, pepper, garlic, or um, everything bagel, any of those things. But these are gonna be jam. Now you're going to cut this into eight wedges. So I cut it into four, like that, and I cut each one in half. Done a lot of blathering, your scones are ready to be tossed in the oven. Would not normally have taken this long if I wasn't talking my way through it, okay? This is going in a 450 degree oven. Because of that, I would not suggest you use your silicone ware. You can use your plain cookie sheet. Um, I would lightly spray it if I was doing that. I have a piece of stoneware here that's well seasoned. And I do like stoneware when I do, um, when I bake bread products gives it a nice, even, toasty heat. But that is up to you. Cookie sheets are great. You're just gonna space them on the pan with a little bit of space in the middle. Like this. And these are ready to go in the oven, 450 degrees in the middle rack of your oven. And I will come back and show you the finished product. They will be in, it says between 12 and 15 minutes. Mine are usually about 14 to 15 minutes. Welcome back everybody. Um, I have just pulled the scones from the oven. They cooked at 450 degrees. Today it was 13 minutes. And I'd like to show you the finished output. This is the nice golden brown top that you would expect on the scones. They are toasted on the bottom and they are light and fluffy. So I hope you've enjoyed my video today. Um, and as you can see, these could be flavored any way you want. So they go great with soups, with chilies, with stews, or with jams, um, cream cheese, whatever you like. I will do another video soon and have a great day.